Orson, do I really have to go in the ring? Yeah. But, but only for the video, just for a little bit, right? Well, every good story has a sad story. We're in the middle of doing this whole construction thing and we got stuff laying around everywhere. And like I am now in the rain, I got a lot of cast iron that I don't have a place to store. So look at it, it's just sitting here in the rain. It's kind of depressing, it looks so sad. All of the water on it. Look, it's basically like a rust bath. Horrible. I feel so bad taking such poor care of my cast iron and I decided we're going to fix that today. Now it may seem that I don't really like and appreciate my cast iron, but actually I do. Cast iron is a fantastic tool to cook with. Cast iron is strong, it's durable. These pans will last you for a lifetime, maybe even longer. You can hand it down to your son or to your children. But besides being durable, they're also fantastic to cook with. A pan from cast iron will absorb a lot of heat and will retain that energy until you put something in the pan and then it releases that energy into the food. So it keeps a stable temperature. It will perform beautiful on meat. It will make a nice crust. Just put your steak in a pan and let it go for a longer time. It will build up a crust like you have never had before. Cast iron is fantastic in many ways, but you have to take good care of it. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a rusty mess like this. So it's time to fix that problem and we're going to Tackle that by taking a look at which means to strip these pans and go back to the base. There are two types of issues that you can have with your cast iron. One is rust and it looks horrible. The other one is old seasoning, which is horrible as well. Both you want to get rid of, but both require a different approach. First I'm going to show you guys my favorite way to get rid of that rust. We'll start by putting on some protective clothes. You want to wear an apron, protect your clothing and some gloves so you don't walk around with rusty hands for two days. As an example, we're going to take that rusty lid of a Dutch oven. And this is actually a really cool Dutch oven because if, if you flip this lid around, it becomes a griddle. Ain't that cool? We'll spray it with a little bit of vinegar. Now I'm not giving it a vinegar bath because this way I can save all my vinegar. Otherwise I'm just using all that vinegar and throw it away afterwards. And I've just sprayed it. It will work exactly the same way. We're just gonna make sure everything's soaking wet. Flip it around, do the same process on the other side. It's important to understand that the vinegar is eating into the rust and it's separating the rust from the iron. But at the same time, if we let it sit too long, it's going to eat into the iron and we're going to get pitting. So we have to be careful. We need to finish this job within 30 minutes. Now that we sprayed everything down, we're going to let it sit for five minutes. Time to scrub it and see if we have some results. We spray it a little bit. You can see that the rust is disappearing and the metal's coming out. We just have to put in the elbow grease and work the whole thing until we got it completely cleaned up. What a fun way to spend a Sunday afternoon. I'm getting tired. Morrison, where's my stand-in? Wow, we're getting a good amount of result, but we can still see that there are some dark rust spots on the edges and in the center, and we still need to wait. So we're going to do the same process, spray it again with vinegar, let it sit for another five minutes, and then brush it down again. And we'll keep repeating that process until we have clear metal. But remember your 30 minutes. Don't go over 30 minutes, otherwise you will have pitting. We quickly rinsed off some of our cast iron and you can already see that this is already starting to look good. Promising even. And this one, well, basically it's done already. It looks fantastic. We're not going to clean this any further. We're just gonna wipe it off and make it dry. Some other parts that were more heavily rustled like these grill grates and our lid, which was heavily rusted, look, is still heavily rusted. We need to go over a couple more times to get these right. So we'll spray some more and let it sit for another five minutes. Sometimes you just can't get into all the nooks and crannies like with this lid. So I'm going to take a dishwashing brush with a hard brush and it will allow us to get in all these little parts where you otherwise can't get to. In the stands, in the angles. This is just so hard to get in. But with a hard brush, you can get there. Brushing, brushing, brushing. 
Brushing, brushing, brushing. While we wait for our cast iron to dissolve, we're gonna play a little oh, music. Oh, our pans are gonna be nice and shiny. We're gonna make them perfect. Can't wait for the result. Just a few more hours of brushing. We're gonna be there. Yeah, brushing, yay! Yeah. Scrubbing, and scrubbing, and scrubbing and cleaning. Hey, Hi. getting rust on my favorite sweater. Now that our pots and pans are free of rust, we're going to scrub it in hot soapy water. We just want to get off that little bit of last rust and at the same time get rid of that vinegar so it will stop the acidity from eating into our iron. Now we'll make sure that we'll clean our cast iron properly. You want to get rid of all that water and all that moisture Otherwise, it will go rusty really quickly. So we're just going to make sure it's dry as we can. There we go. Now, good grease for seasoning that cast iron pan is beef tallow. This stuff will season your cast iron fantastic. And the only problem right now is that it's pretty hard because it's cold outside. And if I want to scrape it onto my pan, it's not going to work. That's way too tough. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this pan in the barbecue or in your oven, warm it up first and then put it on. I preheated my Kamado Joe Big Joe and we're going to use it for our seasoning process. But first we're going to warm up our pan so I have it set to around 100 degrees Celsius. We'll put our pan in and close the lid. Remember we don't need this thing to be super super hot, we just want it to be warm. So we'll take some of that beef tallow, rub it on, and let it melt. Now we'll take some kitchen cloth and wipe it on. Make sure we get in every nook and cranny. Now we got all this oil on the pan and it feels really greasy. So you think we're in the right spot, but actually we're not. We still need to take all of the grease that's on here off. Otherwise the first layer of seasoning is going to be way too thick. So we'll take another kitchen cloth and start wiping off that grease. Get as much of it as you can. And now this is ready to be seasoned. Before we continue to season our pans, we're going to take a look at the pans that have bad seasoning. And what I mean is, look, a pan like this, where there's seasoning and some of it came off and some of it still there. All bad seasoning that's just not gonna protect your pan or it's gonna give you a crappy surface. We're going to take all of it off strip this clean and we're going to start over fresh. I have two methods for this. One is using a degreaser and it can be any brand, any kind you like, but it has to be a little bit aggressive. So a good aggressive oven grill cleaner that you can spray on your pan, you put it in a bag and then leave it to sit there for 24 hours. I want to make sure that I spray all sides of the pan with a nice thick coat of foam. Even the handle and turn it around and do the same for the other side. So we'll close the back and let it sit like this. But who has 24 hours, right? So the alternative is we burn it off. And I know this doesn't work in ovens and indoors, but if you have a barbecue, why not? We just need a little bit of heat a heat to burn the seasoning off because if you go beyond the smoke point there's another point uh, that point is where you burn off everything and all there is left is just a beautiful steel i'm going to raise the temperature to my kamado joe big joe to 400 degrees celsius then we got a nice hot fire and we're going to lower the grill grates to the lowest position for this example i'm going to be using this horrible lid with all kinds of nastiness on it and bad seasoning. I don't even know what's on there. It looks like bird poo or something. Just horrible. Now let's put it in the grill, see what happens. We're now 15 minutes in. I can see that all of the gooey stuff that's on there is going to burn off. Look at it, everything turned dark and burned. So all of that nastiness is disappearing. But you can also see that the rust is disappearing as well. We're burning off the rust, we're burning off the old seasoning. And let's take a look at the other side, where the real heat is going on. Wow, look at that. It actually turned white. Now we'll take a steel brush, and you can see that we can actually scrape away 
an old seasoning. So we didn't have to wait for 24 hours. We can just brush it and brush it until all of that old seasoning is gone. And that's how we pit boys do it. We don't wait for 24 hours for the chemicals to do the work. We just burn it off. What do you think, Denise? This method better than scrubbing? Way better. That did the trick. We burned off everything and I scraped it and I scraped it. I just placed it outside of the grill where I can easily scrape it with my steel brush. And now here we have our result. A nice clean lid, but it's still hot. Mind you, be careful. It stays hot for a very, very long time. I'm just gonna quickly brush off any dust that's still left on here. Clean it up a little bit. This thing is looking good. This is an amazing, amazing way to do it. I love it. Now, we're going to take some of our beef tallow and we're going to rub it on there. Just let it melt onto the lid. Now we'll take our greasy kitchen towel and just rub it in. Now flip it and do the other side. You still have all that grease in that towel. Just use it. Make sure you hit every part, don't skip anything. This is looking so good. What do you think, Marson? Is it looking good or what? Now we'll take the towel without the grease and wipe it down. Get off as much grease as you can. And while Big Joe is doing all the work burning off that residue, we're going to move on to our classic. We set it to a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. And here is where we're going to apply our new seasoning. Our pan looks good. It's all seasoned up. I'm going to put it directly over the fire and we're going to let it burn in the seasoning. We have reached the smoke point on our pan. All of that fat is burning and turning into seasoning. This is the first time seasoning the pan and we're going to do a total of three on all of our cast iron, three coats of seasoning. Our pan has been sitting in a barbecue for 20 minutes. We're going to take it off, let it cool down and be careful now. This thing is super hot so we gotta take our time and wait. It's hard, it's just like waiting for your steak. Our pan is still warm, but it cooled down far enough to go below our smoke point. And we let it sit for around 20 minutes, but this cast iron, it just takes so long to cool down. But the good thing is, it will melt our beef tallow very, very easily. So we can easily let it melt. And we'll take our greasy towel and just work it in. Make sure we get it everywhere, building up that beautiful shine and take off the grease again with a towel that doesn't have grease and this is an important part of the process so don't skip this step it's just gonna take you like 10 seconds to do and it's well worth it back on the barbecue oh wait we got one in there two actually gotta take them off first turning into beautiful cast iron there we go second time season after 20 minutes Take off the cast iron pan, let it cool down again, grease it up with the beef tallow, wipe it off and put it back on the barbecue for the last time. Baking it at a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius, waiting for the beautiful seasoning to build up. Our final seasoning is done. This thing looks absolutely amazing. Woo! Still a bit hot and still some of the smoke is coming off from the grease and the fat that's burning and it's setting down. So we're going to wait a while and we're going to let this really cool down and burn in. But the color definitely turned out perfect. From that old rustic pan, all these pans look horrible. And now we got them beautiful seasoned up. Look at it, we got a big pile of beautifully seasoned pans. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to cook with them. After the pan is cooled down, we're going to place it back on the fire and warm it up again. Warm up again. Yes, it's an important step when you start cooking with a cast iron pan that you give it a little bit of time to warm up. We need the warmth to spread out throughout the pan so we get the best cooking capabilities out of that cast iron pan. Our pan is now nice and hot. We're going to put in a lump of butter and let it melt. I absolutely love cooking with butter and cast iron. It kind of makes a barrier between the meat and the metal. Now I'm going to do something that most of you guys really don't like. I'm going to use my knife to work the butter around. Now doing something like this is going to scare away a lot of people and I know people are going to go in the comments and go, wow, what are you doing? You're messing up all the beautiful seasoning that you just created. Well, let me tell you, this thing is not going to harm that seasoning. A little knife like this or a tool like this is not going to demolish it. It's just going to maybe scrape off a little bit of the top, but nothing that's going to damage it. 
So don't worry about it, you can use metal utensils for your cast iron pan. So we got a nice barrier of fat and our butter is hot. Time to put an egg in and do one of my favorite things. Bake an egg. There's a myth where people think that cast iron can be this beautiful non-stick pan. And you can get there, but almost. A cast iron pan is most of the time not going to be non-stick or super non-stick. But the truth is, we're not really looking for that. We're looking for the cast iron to build up a crust on our food. We're looking for the Maillard effect. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to let it sit, let it build up the crust, do its work, and then take it out. Let me show you guys what I mean with this egg. We're going to look on the bottom of it after it's done. <laughs> look at that beautiful crust. Awesome. See, it's frying. And see how non-stick that is? It's, I'm touching it for the first time. Now look at that. Wow. Well, well, we're getting the heat up in the barbecue. Let me lower it down a little bit. Oh, it's time to take this egg off. It just looks amazing. I'm going to show you guys on the bottom. And Again, I'm using iron utensil, and it's not going to destroy the seasoning. I got a loaf of brown bread. We're gonna place it on top. Look at that, the perfect breakfast egg. This egg turned out amazing. The inside is nice and beautifully soft. The bottom is nice and crunchy. Absolutely gorgeous. Made in our cast iron pan. Now, we cook this egg, and how do we clean the pan afterwards? Let me show you. Look, all we've got left is a little bit of burned butter. And we're just going to scrape that off with a nice towel. Because this pan doesn't need any cleaning. Other than just cleaning it up like this. Make sure you get most of the grease out. And then we'll set it on the fire and let the fat burn off again. And that's how easy it is to maintain a cast iron skillet. Mm. Mm. Let me show you something else. Let me show you what most people consider to be the worst enemy of a cast iron pan. This is a tomato. And really, some people think it's the worst thing for a cast iron pan because it has acidity and it will break down the seasoning on your pan. It's quite the opposite. This is the cast iron's best friend. Actually, cast iron will unlock all of the secrets that are hidden in this tomato. Let me cut this up into thick slices. When you burn this a little, it becomes really sweet and it also unlocks umami flavors. If we put some butter in our cast iron pan, let it melt down, and then we'll put our tomato on top. Instantly the cast iron is doing its work and it's building up a crust, a Maillard effect on that tomato. Oh, turning all of those juices that first were a little bitter, bitter, sour, into sweetness and goodness. <laughs> Flavor, 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 that's what this is. Season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And again, a myth to bust. Salt in a cast iron pan. Don't do that, Pitmaster Rex. What are you doing? You're hurting the seasoning. Don't worry about it. It's a tool. We need to use it. So the salt there is fine. It's not gonna be there for long enough to break down that seasoning that we build up. Besides, that seasoning is already pretty strong. Time to take off these tomatoes and see if they taste good. Don't dive into that straight away, you're gonna burn your tongue. Let it sit and cool down first. Oh, man, why is it that for all good things you have to wait? Mm, smells like tomato sauce. Now it's cooled down, let's give that a try. Mm. Wow, super, super tasty. This is good stuff. If you make a tomato sauce out of this, you're gonna be really happy and really impressed. Or just the pasta, imagine. Having a pasta and then just grilled tomatoes on top of that pasta. Oh, I'm getting hungry as we speak of it. I wanted to show you guys the tomato for one reason and that's the caramelization. But also for the other reason, the myth that this would really destroy the seasoning in your pan. Because that's not true. Let's take a look at our pan. Let me finish this part. I'm going to eat this. We got salt in there. We got the residue of the tomato that's burned. We got a little of that burned butter in. And we're going to take that kitchen cloth and just wipe it off. Look at that. You see how easy that is. 
I see some of that salt is in there and I'm just scraping it back and forth and nothing's happening. It's not destroying our pan or the seasoning whatsoever. Tap. Tap. If you wonder about the bottom side turning blue, that's from the charcoal. Don't worry, it's not hurting the seasoning. If you take a look at that inside and we clean it up nice and easy, all of the salt's gone and look, it actually looks well seasoned. And it's even better than before. And we cooked tomatoes in a cast iron pan. Should have been destroyed. We put salt in there, it should have been destroyed. But it actually looks better than before. So cooking in your cast iron pan is easy. Just use enough butter, make everything slip and slide. And don't worry about little things like scraping your pan or putting in acidity. Of course, you shouldn't put in a lemon and let it sit for an hour. That's gonna destroy it, but a tomato and just grilling it, it's gonna be fine, don't worry about it. And worst case scenario, you can always repeat the process, build up your seasoning afterwards. Hey, it's gonna take a little while, but in the end, you're gonna have to do it again at some point. I think Denise is still scrubbing a pan somewhere and, uh, <clears throat> well, not, <laughs> Well, Denise right here, but hey, you get the point, right? It was a lot of work and it took a long time, but look at the results, man. Look at where we came from, all that rust and horrible stuff. And now we got a beautiful collection of well-seasoned cast iron. It all looks amazing. It is really, really worth the effort. And you saw it, we baked a beautiful egg, we caramelized tomatoes. These things are awesome. If you buy cast iron, you need to look at the quality because you can see that this cast iron is really smooth. Whereas cast iron like this, oh, it feels so rugged. And this means this cast iron will never be nonstick. You will never get to that point. It's a fantastic pot, don't get me wrong, but you will never get it to bake as smooth as this surface. Look at how smooth that is. Ooh, look at how smooth that is. Okay. Oeh, hoe vaak? Nee, want ik was niet klaar. Dat is het eerste deel van de zin nog maar. What are you doing? Just let me finish that sentence. It's like smooth like a baby's bottom. Morrison, come on. Get with the program. Smooth like a baby's bottom. That's how we like our cast iron. And then, when you have your ultimate seasoning on, like building it up over time, it's gonna be oh, the best thing you ever had. So, be careful for that when you're buying cast iron. Don't buy cheap, you're gonna be sorry. I think... I said everything there is to say about cast iron. Don't be afraid, scrub it down, use the iron utensils, put acidic stuff in there. Just have fun with your cookware, that's most important. Your cookware is not here for you. Oh yes, your cookware is here for you. Yes, I'm not here for the cookware. The cookware is here for me, that's what I wanted to say. You get the point. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, then leave me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. And in the meantime, and keep on grilling! Thank you patrons and YouTube members, see you guys next time. Cheers! Ba -ba -da -bum. I, I, lo I love it. Doing this again. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Denise, keep on going. I got another stack of cast iron over there. Yeah. We got a whole pellet full of it. You're gonna be busy for the next two or three days. Or years. Plenty, plenty of work still to do. Besides, where are we gonna keep this? We gotta put this back out in the rain again. Ah! Uh-uh. <laughs> uh -uh. We gotta store it somewhere, somewhere safe.